Hi, I show you how you can connect your Python to the MetaTrader 5 trading platform. Um, first thing you have to do, you have to pip install this MetaTrader 5 or pip3 install and take care of the capital MMT. After that, you can import it here as MT5, that's default. That's all you need to connect to it. All the rest I'm importing here, pandas, numpy, python, time zone, and the date time stuff is to work with the data afterwards. Um, I will show you an example here in this video. I run it, import, we are done. Then you can use this method here, mt5 initialize, and I just get an error if it's not working. So run it, no error, the connection is initialized. Next step, you can connect to your account. I put the account in a variable here, for sure it's a demo account. And then you can use a method mt5 login with the account, the password, and you have to give the server a third argument. I tried to put the password and the server as variables in here as well, but it just doesn't work. And you know, therefore I just, I just log in using this way, so it just works. If it's returning true, it's authorized. I want to get my account information as dictionary. I loop through this account information uh, through this dictionary and print out the information. This looks like this here. So you get all the information and this proves that you are logged in to your account in the MediaTrader file. That's it. Now comes an example of what you can do. Um, I set a time zone using the time zone message from this module I've imported. And I need this time zone because here I'm defining the range from within I want to receive the data. And so this is from the whole October last year to end of October this year. And if you define this date time um, this daytime object with the time zone, this becomes an um, aware object. We have two, two types of daytime objects, the naive ones and the aware ones, and the aware ones are knowing in which time zone they are. So it makes sense if you work with uh, hourly bars or minute bars, um, you know in which time zone you are handling your data. So this is why I'm defining this time zone variable here. Must need to must forget to run. So after that you can select your symbol with mt5 dot symbol select. For the example here I use the German uh, DAX. It's GR40, maybe take care at your broker, maybe it's a different name. So I select it. If it's not working I get a error message and I tell MT5 to shut down and quit. If it's returning true, so if the selection of the symbol works, I just get nothing. Okay, here I create the two daytime objects variables. And after this, if we are connected and selected the symbol, we can use methods like copy rates range. So here I want to receive all daily bars from within this range. So from 31 October 21 to 31 October this year, I want to receive all daily bars and put it please in this data structure here. Run. And that's all I want. I just wanted to receive the, receive the daily one bars and then you can shut down. And we can look into the array, into this data structure, just running, just calling it. And here we have all daily bars from within this range, from within this year. And you see it's not very readable because we receive the date into this, uh, in the second format from 1970. Therefore, the first thing I do is to put all 
the received data, this red daily one, to put this in a data frame from pandas. And the data frame, I just call it DF raw. And then I convert the time column, it's the first one, which is in unit with the seconds. Please convert it with the daytime method from pandas into a readable time format. Now we take a look at DF raw again, again after converting it and you will see the daytime is just uh, much better readable. Here you see where we receive all daily bars every day, one row with the open, high, low, close, time, uh, close data, the prices, the tick volume spread and the real volume. We received 250, 70 rows, what, uh, what means um, 257 bars. So there were 257 days um, the exchanges were open within this period. What I want to receive here is um, I want to know how many bars within this time range were bullish and how many were bearish. Um, the bulls are the ones where the close price is above the open and the beers are the one where the close price is below the open. So this is all I'm doing here. I get the length of the index, which is 257. I initialize the two variables the counting for counting the bars to zero. And I loop with the iterators method through the data frame. And the position will be the index, so the bar number. And in D we have all the data. And with d.close and d.open, I can um, request these prices here. Um, to show you that this is, um, that this is correct data, you can take a look here. We have the 28th October. Wait, let me put myself away. Just to prove you that I'm receiving the correct data. Um, here is the opening price. It's 13,126 on the 28th of October. So let's go into the meter trader to the 28th of October. 28th. And then what? Oops, sorry. So the opening price, 13,126.77 from the 28th. You have here, you can compare in this data frame, in this window here. So the 28th is this one. And you see on the left, the opening price is exactly this 13,000 here. Take a look here at open 28th. Wait, um, here you go, at 7,126.77, exactly the price we receive with our code. So that just to prove you that this is really the data that happened in the markets. And this way I just loop through the 2,257 rows and collect the information how many bars were bulls and beers. Just run it and here I just print it out all bars. This will be the 257 and the bulls and the bears. Here you go again the 257 and we had 132 bulls and 125 beers. So this is pretty much 50-50 which proves that it's really a 50-50 game. I ran all these tests with uh, M15 bars over two years, M1 bars, and you always end up with something around 50-50. Pretty interesting, but that's just the beginning. Um, I think this way you can start um, doing your own statistics 
about the market and learn how it behaves. I hope this helps you. And alright, that was it. Bye.